Good afternoon, students, and welcome to UE, the Home Away From Home seminar. We will be starting at about 5.05, .05, so in the meantime, we'll have our video playing. But I want to take this time just to welcome everyone and thank you for being here and encourage you to share the link and invite some more of your friends to come along and watch. We will be having a very informative panel discussion, and I want to big up the lead on this project as we start off, Maya Buchanan-Smith. So see you in five minutes. Share the link with your friends. Go around and get a, a glass of water or so on if you want but be back in five minutes. Thank you, everyone.
Hi. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Maya Buchanan Smith, and I'm your Vice President of Properties and Special Initiatives. I want to thank everybody who's tuning in right now to the UE Home Away from Home seminar. Uh, we're talking about holistic development, getting involved, how you can network with both administration and fellow students. Uh, I'm just going to introduce you guys to some of the panelists that we have. So first off, we have Mr. Andrew Thompson. He is currently the financial advisor for the Guild Treasury Committee. Uh, he's an economic and economic, sorry, and statistics major, and he's also the past treasurer of the UE Mona Guild. And in his free time, he likes to cook, and he also has an interest in sports, like playing cricket for the University of the West Indies. We also have with us Ms. Savannah Grant, who is currently our Vice President of Services and Special Projects. And she is a finalizing actuarial science student who is extremely passionate about outreach, demonstrated by her involvement in the Helping Hand Initiative, which helps children at the Hope Valley Experimental School prepare for their PEP exams. Her on-campus extracurriculars include the UA Actuarial Society and the Panoridim Steel Orchestra. We also have with us the big bad pretty, Ms. Dalian, Ms. Danielle Mullings. She is a software engineering student with a natural affinity for leadership and for youth empowerment. I stand by that 100%. Her interests include technology and the arts, which fuels her hobby, which is documentary making. She is said to be one of the field's brightest young minds, and Daniel aspires to become a world leader in technological rep representation for the Caribbean and Latin America. We also have Mr. Saeed Bernard. He is an in international debater and also a radio talk show host. Saeed, during Saeed's tenure at UE, he has served many student le leadership capacities, including being the former president of the UE Debating Society. And he's currently the international head delegate on the Model UN Society. He's al he also has a passion for local and international ministry. His interests have helped him to develop his public speaking abilities, which allowed him to rank at the sixth best public speaker in the world. And in his free time, he unwinds by watching Netflix or reading self-help books. And last but definitely not least, we have Dr. Win Winklet Gallimore, who is a senior lecturer in the Department of Chemistry and also the Associate Dean of Student Experience. Um, a little bit of what she does, her research interests are focused mainly on finding natural products created by marine plants and animals that may be used in cosmetic or nutraceutical industry. She's best known for her amazing job as a student liaison and always willing to listen and give advice, especially to the FST Guild Committee and also FST students. I thank all of these panelists for being here. I just want to give them a chance to speak, so I'll come off screen. How are you guys feeling? Um, how was your, well, not how was your day, but how are you feeling? Um, how do you feel about this seminar so far? Daniel, I can't hear you. I think you're muted. Okay. I was saying, um, I think this is a very important space that you've created and a very amazing idea that you've come up with. So I'm excited and happy to be here and happy to be here with such amazing panelists. And I'm happy to hear from each of you. That's me. I, I guess I'll go second. <laughs> okay, going. Uh, it is indeed a pleasure to be here with the Faculty of Science and Technology. And I'm looking forward to what you will talk about this I guess I'll do it. You guys hear me? So, okay. You guys hear me? Yeah. All right, so good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I think this is really good seeing that at the current point in time with the pandemic, it's a great way to introduce the faculty and a great way to introduce the committee, Ms. Mullins. Um, I look forward to the discussions for this afternoon. The great minds here, Saeed, and for one. Um, so, before. all right. Oh, Savannah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> One sec. Yes, um, nothing long. I'm excited to be here. I'm always excited to, to interact 
for the students of the faculty. I looked at the topics that we'll be discussing today and I feel like it's going to be very engaging. I know a few of you here on the panel and I can't wait to get to know the rest of you more. I think it's going to be good. I see some people in the comments right now. Kiara, Javon, everyone. Hi, guys. I'm ready to get started. Love that, love that. And Dr. Gallimore, how are you feeling? Sorry, Dr. Gallimore, your mic is muted. My mic is muted. Okay. I'm good now. Can you hear me now? My word. Yes? Okay, wonderful. So yes, it's, it's my pleasure to be here with all of you young people. You know, whenever I'm with young people, I feel nice and young. So um, it's, it re I really would, I'm glad to, to be here with you all. And so let's have a wonderful afternoon. All right, great. So Andrew, I noticed that you mentioned the pandemic and how that's affecting students. So th for those who are not sure of where their what their interests may be, or what does student involvement really look like in the midst of a pandemic to you? Well, um, for, well, serving on the last year, I'd have really seen how important student involvement or advocacy would have been. Um, you'd have seen how much the guild the guild or the our judge would have done over the last couple of months since March. Um, the telephone plans, the contract advocating for how exam structures are, classes are going to be structured. Um, the guild actually raised extra and put extra into student financing. Um, students who are stuck on campus because they can't leave looking for their response to sponsor food and such and such and such and it continues. So I think that it is it was very important having people who are very serious about student welfare, right? And not only the students about student welfare, but able to work within with admin and the students and find middle ground. Because it's, it's best when they can it's sustainable when they have both parties come together to find one solution. So I think it is very important to in, in leadership. So I would encourage a lot of people to help out and join the various UR club committees and help out whichever way they can this year because each one help one this year. We can't do we can't survive this year without each other. Definitely. One hundred percent agree. Would anybody else like to add? I mean, it's, it's a different space that we're all going to be in, you know, in terms of a mental space as well. And so you really have to, as, as Andrew did say, you know, you have to band together, even among faculty. You know, um, I was reflecting on it today. You know, some of us are not as technologically advanced as others. And so uh, what we find happening is that we're all helping out each other. And that really, that sense of community is actually enhanced when we seek to to work together to make things happen definitely i 100 percent agree with you um additionally uh, i'm going to ask this question for saeed what do you think is networking because in jamaica a lot of people like to use this word links and to talk about establishing links but what do you think really is networking for a student at the university how do you network all right uh thank you so much so as it relates to networking it's very simple as much as having a conversation with even a fellow student you know and you find that and i found actually that throughout my tenure in my various leadership positions my job was made very much easy because of the relationships that you have with students so that's one level of networking that i think a lot of the times we get about the classmates that you have, the classmates that you study with, that's also networking. When you, you know, 20 years from now, 10 years from now, when you're in your jobs, it will be you guys were in different sectors working with each other. And so, you know, the first thing is your friends, your peers, your classmates. That's the first step of networking. Now, the second step of networking is what you, you call uh, some sort of an outsourced network. It means that with this network, you're able to get opportunities. It means that this, with this network, you're able to provide opportunities for yourself. 
And it also means that with this network, it also helps with your net worth because you now have what we call an arsenal of people, a cadre of people that you know you can call on for something. And so networking, it is very important, but it is also creating and connecting with people, uh, convincingly, as a matter of fact, and sustainably to ensure that a relationship is formed and that relationship sooner or later does become symbiotic. It, has, it is very important. So for instance, don't be afraid to network with your dean. Don't be afraid to network with your lecturers. As a matter of fact, uh, being head delegate uh, to Harvard representing the university, uh, a part of what I did different was set meetings with the campus registrar, the principal, the deputy principal, the director of student services and development. And you find that even when persons thought, I had an aim of 5,000 US, when persons thought that, yo, you wouldn't get that much because, you know, you were always broke. It is because I set meetings with them. It is because I had that conversation with them. So when I pick up the phone and call and say, Dr. Stanbury, you know, uh, this is the situation and we need X, Y, I write a letter and I get it. And so you will surpass your own expectations and the expectations of others if it is that you've set relationships with people. And that is what's very important. Networking is not that you know somebody. And I think that will always get that wrong. Oh, I, mm -hmm. I know such man. So I'm, I'm networking. No, that's not networking. Net networking is building a relationship. That person must remember your name. That person must remember what you have to offer and you must remember what that person has to offer. It sounds quite opportunistic, but it's really how the world works. Everyone thrives from opportunity. Mm -hmm. And a part of building that relationship is caring for the person personally, but also remembering that there is a professional symbiotic relationship. So in a nutshell, that's not right. Like Saeed has made so many important points there. Um, I think for me, one of the first things I look at, and I always tell people there are so many opportunities around you right now, is just for you to open your eyes. Because if you are thinking about the mere fact that your classes have maybe 300 persons or so on in, in, in one class alone, now imagine that maybe 10 or 15 of those persons start some big business in a 10 or 15 years. If you are just to connect and reach out, and it can be as simple as starting off with one little conversation saying, hi, you know, I like your shirt or I like it, whatever it is. It doesn't have to be a shirt, right? But starting to build some sort of relationship because the reality is that as a student at the University of the West Indies, these are the young minds of the Caribbean that in another 15 to 20 years are going to be leading some of the charges, not only in the Caribbean, but also internationally speaking. And so one of the focus, one of the focuses I think people should have is how can I meet more people, more students that are here? So yes, it's amazing to know the persons in the leadership positions. You know, maybe you want to know the guild president and you want to know the dean and so on and so forth. But there's also a lot of value in the persons that are right where you are, sitting beside you in your classes or virtually raising their hand in Blackboard Collaborate just as you are. There are many amazing persons and sometimes we overlook people because they don't have a title or they don't have a position and we say you know i'm not going to talk to this person is the one up there that i'm looking to get towards when the real value that can be exponentially increased are the persons that are right beside you already that's where your network is i think i think that's 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 true i think I always still I always deal with first years since I've been at UA. I've helped first years transition to university from high school, helping out with their various questions moving forward. And I always tell them that if they come to UA and they only live with a degree, they would have failed. No matter if it was a first class honors or not, if you only left to show with a degree, you would have failed UA because there's much more to get from UA. UA itself is a diverse, I think it's maybe the biggest community in Jamaica. The most diverse market, right? A lot of persons come to UA, leave without a degree, but leave with a business, right? Or they start their business, growing it from UA, start it from UA, right? So I always tell you that there's much more to offer than your degree at UA, right? So I always say that look where you can gain much more, right? I always tell you that people you meet, because a lot of persons don't know how to speak to people. 
like so I said, the first year, them talk, interacting with these various groups, and I see them speaking to each other, and I say, yo, you don't know who you're talking to at this point in time, right? You can't be talking to this person in a different way. That like, you're not going to let the person treat them with that, that amount of respect. So, where in the future, you never know that person might be what interviewing for a job in the future, and that person remember the time that you disrespect them, right? So, always, you know, that level of respect moving forward, always treating people how you don't want them treated. Also, I'm not you always, you see, if you continue treating people with the respect, they, they will remember you. Um, you're speaking to a business partner, you don't have to give him a name, but you shake him and firm you, look him in the eyes when he's talking to you, he remember you, right? Um, you know, some type of sponsorship meeting deal with the marketing directors, pitching your ideas, they were good, they will remember you, right? Always about having a good first impression and leaving an impression that people will remember you. At, um, for me, what I can say where you we have helped with networking is that um, obviously where people have reached out to me from recommendations from people say, um, I have this for you to do. Are you interested in doing this for me? Right? So in networking is very important. I mean, just as important as the degree because with the right network and the right degree, it will get you so far. Well, the right degree will get you so much, but the right network with the degree will get you much further. Definitely. Um, I just want to also step in here and talk about the concept of, and you're, you're talking about you and how diverse it is, which is very, very true. You know, you want to have a scenario where, you know, you meet someone from the Bahamas, someone from St. Vincent, you know, this it's someone from Turks and Caicos, persons from all across the Caribbean. You need to establish these friendships with all of these individuals so that you can know about their own culture you can know about the type of life that they have you know there's so much to learn from talking to people and talking to people from all walks of life i really agree with what daniel said you know it's not just about those who who quote unquote have it you know in terms of the title it really is about interfacing with persons from all walks of life there's no one who cannot teach you something you know and um I speak a lot about the concept of EQ versus IQ. So yes, if you know, and this right, if, you, if you, all you need with is a degree, then you would not have succeeded to the extent to which you ought because IQ, yeah, it's important, but what is way more important is the concept of EQ being emotionally intelligent. And so, yeah, interfacing with people is an yeah. absolutely critical skill that we should all seek to hold. I just want to jump in. Say something very important. You know, having a symbiotic relationship, people that you connect with, it's very important because a lot of people go out to network and it's just, what can I get from this person? How can I get this person? And when you go in that mindset, that's when you start to do what Daniel mentioned. You only go for the people with this big title. So, oh, they're the head of this organization or they have a doctor or a peer, all these abbreviations behind the name. But no, you also have to make yourself marketable. Otherwise, you enter into, to piggyback off of his reference, a parasitic relationship where you're not giving anything. So you don't, somebody said in the comments, you network to increase your net worth, but you have to go in with some net worth. You get me? And you have to be open to connecting with people. I don't, for lack of a better word, below you or doesn't have as much experience as you. So while you're learning from somebody, you need to be able or open to teaching what you have learned as well. So you can't just sit there looking for people to give you opportunities. And also you have to keep building on that relationship. Because if you come to me, I see you talking to me. And as soon as I connect you with something, the relationship just, just ends. It's going to reflect badly on I'm not going to seek you out for any more opportunities. And remember, once you're networking with somebody, it's one big network. So people talk. So when you destroy this relationship, they're networking with other people as well. So you might have destroyed other relationships that you have formed or ones that you didn't even know you wanted to form in the future. So you have to be mindful of how you're, of how you're approaching these people. Try not to be selfish. Try to have something to bring to the table as well. Let them know what you can offer them. And very, oh, 
And you mentioned something as well, getting to know the people around you. Like first, you might be afraid to talk to people, but as Daniel said, I still go up, hi, I like your shirt, I like your smile, something, and it gets the connection going. Because even the other day we had our small business, I had no idea that there were so many people inside tech with all these businesses, and they're just so ambitious and loving it. Little things like these, they can take off in the next couple of years, and you would have known the person from now. And it can be like, oh, I remember when you just started when you got that little on Instagram and whatever. But then if you sat there and you saw they never like any other post, never reach out or nothing. And then when the business get big is when you reach out and say, Oh, you have any little job that I can do or you can no 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 no. You need to try to appreciate people from where they are now. Don't put this hierarchy and say that you're only gonna connect with people at this level and up. Come more than likely, you're not even at that level. So you need to humble why they're gonna reach big. Also, humble yourself and connect with everyone and make sure that you're building a network by yourself, that for yourself before, don't seek others to build the work for you. Build it and connect with people at the same time so that you can help there as well. Very yeah. big point, Savannah. So many points coming yeah. out from that. And the first thing I would connect with from your from what you, you just said is, you know, Chris Martin always sings and a man say, if you don't love me now, don't love me later. So it's kind of the same exact vibe of what you're saying yeah. now. But I also want to yes. allude to this yes. quote I read from a book. And it said, you know, one, I think Thomas, Thomas Edison or whoever invented the light bulb, right? Light bulb inventor. It said he had the idea, but by himself, he could not like have that reach to, to connect electricity or light or so on across the entire world or across his country or wherever he started. He It said and pointed yeah. out that he had to have an infrastructure. So you have to put up the light posts and put up the wires. And that infrastructure is essentially what your network is. So you can come up with an amazing idea. I am going to have a light bulb and bring light to the world. But if you don't have that infrastructure that is going to build it out and support you, the light can't reach anywhere but right in front of you. So you have to look at who are the people around you? Who do you surround yourself with, one? And two, where do you want to go? Do you have similar goals? Are you all moving in the same direction? Because sometimes there are persons that may be holding you back, maybe giving you negative thoughts or filling your head with negative things, and you don't even fully realize because you haven't stopped to analyze what is the quality of my current network. Are they building me up? and helping me reach where I'd like to go, or are they bringing me back, or are they keeping me at the same place? So I love to surround myself with ambitious people who have goals that, that make me wonder and say to myself, how is that even possible for us to do? Because it starts to make me think that way more things are possible the, as, as the more you're exposed to persons who think like that. So definitely some major points that were made from Savannah. Wow. Okay. Um, thank you guys for all those points, all those answers. Very, you know, well-rounded answers. All Everybody contributed a little piece to the puzzle and it all made sense. Um, right now, I want to introduce the actual host for this session. He was having internet issues earlier. Uh, his name is Mr. Oren Green. Let me just check one second to make sure that he's here. And just to let everyone know, All Mr. Right. Oren Green is our physics rep. All right. Hello. Good evening, everyone. Um, again, my name is Oren Green. I will be hosting Hello, um, the rest of the show. I would like to thank Maya for her marvelous introductions and for her for her, her good her good presentation um, in the meantime until I came. Again, I would like to welcome you to the UE Home Away From Home. All right. So we have already gone through um, a multitude of, of, of the questions in relation to networking. I have one left um, for the panelists that are here. So how do you network with staff? Many are scared of even approaching staff over coursework. So how do you connect with someone who you may have completely different interests um, aside from academia? 
Okay, I want to just mention that we actually have a program. This is for first year students, so the first year experience program. And in that type of a context, you know, the, the lecturer would have let down his or her hair a little bit. And the, it would be a whole group of students that the person will be re relating to. So that would be one way, you know, to, to be a part way, of okay. the first year experience program. So that's oh, one way. FYE, okay. All well, right. Well, you have office hours, which for most persons who does math related courses is very important. Right? Mm -hmm. So for me, like um, certain courses which are very are very much intensive courses, I'll leave in the lecture to the lecture office in office hours. Right? It gives it gives me an opportunity to get to know them, the opportunity to like have a more you know one on one session with them. And not all the time it will be yeah. but most times like talking to um Dr. Harden or um Mr. Sorens about their life. They will tell you the things they get to know then you get a you know a relationship going about where they yes. know know you per se. And then it's very mm -hmm. important because to be a master's or anything after that, you need recommendations from your lecturers, right? Most lecturers will give a recommendation unless they can call you in their class. So you need to have that kind of relationship. Okay, with, okay, yeah. With so organic lecturer. interactions are important, yes. Yeah. You know, to, to, to add what, to what Andre said, you know, yes. you cannot want to build a relationship with your lecturers that you're not doing what you came to do in the first place. So you can't go to people in class and you don't participate. Um, you just sit down at the back of the class on your phone and then you want to, you know, have that opportunity to network. What you have to do really and truly, and what I have done, so I mean, I, I used to do law, well, just graduated, and I have a conversation with my lecturers. So my lecturer is saying something, I'm, but I disagree. And so I put the lecture on the spot and now the lecture is explaining to the class and myself uh why it is that she's right no when i have this that discussion i may still not agree i may still find it very hard to believe and so i said all right miss after class when you talk and then that way when the class finishes and people are heading out i am waiting for her to leave so i can you know meet her outside and have that conversation you find that when you have that drive for your academia when you have that drive for the subject that that lecture um is giving then you also find that it's very easier for you to segue from an academic or academia standpoint to a personal standpoint and so that is where you say uh oh, miss how did you study you know that was my thing in first year i am not a studier and so i needed to figure out all right how many people have studied this because for no 100 cases for just one course that's crazy and so i said seriously how did, how did you study when you were doing this and you have that conversation and you find that it's very easy to build. One thing that stood out to me was the former dean of the faculty of law, Dr. Leighton Jackson, where he, like, he'd been in class, and if you ask other students, they said that he gives more life stories than he gives content. And so he will come and he will tell you about his days at Wilmers and his days being a lawyer, and then he teaches. But then what I picked up from that was that he was very open. He was very willing to share his story and for you to get inspiration from his story. So while a lot of other students bashed him and said, oh, we don't want to hear about his story, we want to hear about the content alone. I took interest in his story. And so I did not only ask him about schoolwork, but I said, sir, you said this happened to you. Why did it happen to you? And you find that even now, even now, that is a good person to have in my corner. This man is a part of the New York bar, a, a senior attorney in Jamaica. And so if I want a job recommendation, it is him. Right, and so you find that you shouldn't probably burn your bridges uh, a lot of the times with these lectures. So you get a bad grade, and you cuss and oh, not talk to or whatever. No, they have their degree already. They have their PhDs, their masters. They already have their salaries, their families. You want yours, and so you have to be focused, and you have to remember what you want and how to get to that place, especially when it comes to your lectures and tutors. So I love that quote that you just said. They have their salaries and families you need yours or you want yours i love that absolutely and I, I completely agree because i have seen in many instances where as just as you said students overlook the the lecturer like the reality is that there's somebody teaching you yes who you may not know anything about like they have an entire life story 
you know, a job maybe they had before, a job that they want to have after, or research that they're doing while they're a lecturer that you may not know about. So it comes back to that same point of not overlooking the people around you in general. Because there, I remember there's one lecturer for one of my computing courses who was saying, you know, students, I'm not going to be in class next week. I'm going to get someone else to do the lecture because I have to go and speak at a Google conference or something. And I remember everybody went, what? He's, he's connected to Google. He's speaking to those kind of people. And the entire year, you may have been saying, boy, you know, this lecture boring. This, I'm going to skip this class, you know, X, Y, Z. And the man has connections to Google and Silicon Valley. And you as the young budding computer scientist has just overlooked the best connection possible or the closest connection you may have to where you aspire to be towards because you're overlooking and assuming that there's no value in the people that are already around you. So I strongly encourage everybody to speak to your teacher after class. Like you can easily go to them and say, you know, hello. What I would do is introduce myself. I would say, hi, you know, my name is Daniel Mullings um, and I'm a student here. I want to do X, Y, Z in the future. What is the advice that you would give to somebody who wants to be where you are or wants to get involved in the kind of research you're in? And I think that's like my million dollar question that I ask almost any person, regardless of whether they're in computing or documentary making or areas of my interest or not. I ask them, what advice would you give somebody who wants to reach where you are right now? And that alone will start a conversation, but it's also some important um it's, it's essentially opening up yourself to what Dr. Gallimore said earlier, being able to learn from each of the persons around you. So yes, if ever, anybody else wants to contribute to um, that point, uh, go ahead, unmute. Hello. So it looks like we may have lost our host, but no worries. I know we're also looking at, oh, I see Savannah unmuted. You can go ahead. So, um, yes, about connecting with the lecturer, know that they're doing this re these research projects because not all of them will come forth and say, hey, I'm doing this and that. And even though you see them teaching you every day, some of them are actually shy. And yes, you have all these doctors and all these people in the faculty, but there are also people without these um, prefixes or names but you don't know about the prefixes after and you're not gonna know until you talk to them um i do encourage going to office hours sadly not a lot of people make use of it so if you do trust me you're going to stand out and even if it's not an official office hour that's listed you can always just go knock on the door and say hey are you free if they're not you just try again when you see them on the spine they say hi they remember these little things try to sit at the front of the class if you're shy try to talk afterwards. A lot of these lectures are very approachable. Um, somebody said, oh, I think Gabriel said in the comments that a lot of them are chill. Imagine you're there the whole year saying, oh, Dr. Brown is so chill and approachable and whatnot, well, and he's so smart, but you don't make use of it. That does, doesn't that just seem a little silly to you? A lot of you guys know that a lot of these lectures are actually approachable and nice situation. So while if you're afraid to approach them in a normal setting, like in the classroom, if if you're afraid to like stay back afterwards, what you can do is sit them on start the conversation there, and then they can. Well, you're not going to sit them on the spine, no, obviously. But email them, talk to them in the group chat, PM them. There are different ways that you can talk to them. If you don't like the formal way, try to approach it informally because while they're your lecturer, still people, and you have to remember that when you're approaching them. Yeah. I agree a hundred percent with everything you all said. Oh, Dr. Gallimore, are you still speaking? Because I can't. I think your mic is muted. Unmute. Oh, yeah. Yes, I was I was agreeing with a lot of things that Savannah had to say. You know, truth is that we don't have any horns. We are really nice people on the inside. <laughs> and um, you really have to, to take a chance. That's what life is about. Life is about taking a little bit of a risk. What if... The lecturer boof you. If the lecturer boof you, that's just how it is. You just know, okay, maybe I shouldn't approach the lecturer this way the next time around. But mm -hmm. we are here to help you. We are here to serve you. And you need to have that as your mindset. Your mindset should be, we want to help you to move forward with your life. Okay? And you may meet a one or two lecturer who, you know, may 
have an attitude or whatever. But that's that's the minority. That's the really the truth of the matter. We want to help you to proceed and get on with your life. And whichever way we can help you, that is what we'll do. And even in the, as you all know, for chemistry, we're going to be having physical labs. And so for those who have those physical labs, take full advantage of those opportunities to interface in person with the lecturer. You know, so for example, I, I got a um a request to do a recommendation for a student the other day. And I was just scratching my head, oh, who is this student again? Who is this student? That's really not a good thing, okay? You want to be in a position where they, they as your queen, they know who you are. And so what you also can do, since we're in an online space, you, you send an email, you can also, so that they at least know your name. Um, in terms of in the online space, make sure you're the first one that's entered the, the, the class, the, the BBC class, you know? So they say, oh, Danielle is here. And Danielle is always here and early and on time in those first five listing of names. Make sure yours is there so that there's some idea that we know that, wow, this is a diligent student. That's how we're going to have to do it in the online, in the online space. And as I said, for those who have last do interaction. Yes, we will all have on our masks and our lab coat and our lab glasses, but we still have nice, warm personalities underneath all of that. All right. I think it was important for you to highlight um, how how it translates to the online environment because mm -hmm. this is new, especially for our first years coming in. This is a new modality for them. And so I think you alluded to, you know, sending an email. Maybe it can be an introductory email at the start to say, hi, I am XYZ student. Uh, here are some of my career interests. And I'm excited to be a part of your class this semester. Do you have any tips for the semester or stuff that I should look out for? So it's very important to see that, that translation from how it would happen face to face to how it will now have to happen um, online. So very important point there. Yeah. Definitely agree with everything that you guys said. So right now we're going to give our speakers just a little bit of a break. So you guys can go drink some water, have a fresh breath, etc. And we're going to introduce to you a video on the mentorship program. Applications are still open for the mentorship program. You guys can still apply. It is a good way to network because sometimes your mentors actually have connections that can help you advance as well. Um, this video is done by our EAC, that's our external affairs chairperson, Ms. Tashik Gibson. Enjoy.
Okay, students, so we do know that there was an issue with the audio going on. So I'm just letting you all know that we are aware and rectifying the issue as we speak. So you'll soon be able to hear from our amazing external affairs chairperson, Ms. Tashik Gibson. So the video will be loaded up really soon. Have a tit. Faculty of Science and Technology Field Committee recognizes the need for academic, social, and emotional development. As such, for the year 2020-2021, we have the FSP Mentorship Program. So the mentorship program is for students by students. If you are a first-year student coming in and you want a mentor, then you can apply to be a mentor. If you are a second-year student, you can apply to be both a mentor and a mentee, or you can choose either. You will mentor a first year student and you will be mentored by a student in third year or higher. And if you're in third year, fourth year or higher, and you want to help others to show them the way, then you can apply to be a mentor. So if you want to know more about the program, if you want to get our link for application, you can check out our FSP Guild Committee pages on Instagram, and LinkedIn. Also, for more information, email us at fspgc.externalaffairs at gmail.com. Thank you, and remember, we're the Faculty of Greatness. So there you have it. That was Ms. Tashik Gibson speaking to uh, our mentorship program. Now, I think this is going to be a record-breaking year because we already have nearly 500 applicants, including mentors and mentees. So definitely, we want to hit that 500 mark since we're so close. Why not? Um, so if you are a mentor, you want to be a mentor, I would really encourage you to sign up for the program um, as applications are still open. So mentors and mentees, please sign up and please register. Um, in the meantime, I see all of our panelists are back and we were speaking about networking before. I know another um, part of what this seminar is to speak to is holistic development. So maybe we could look at, or Maya, if you can give the next question, you can go ahead. Seems like Maya may be a bit frozen and that's cool. So as I was saying, we do need to look at holistic development as a part of this seminar. That was Maya's vision. So I'll throw the question out. How do you balance the different aspects of your life, whether as a student leader or as a student or as a lecturer, even for Dr. Gallimore? Uh, what would you recommend students do? So we can start with Dr. Gallimore. What would you recommend students do to be um, developing in a holistic sense? So you can unmute and respond. I'm muted. Okay, go. yes. Thank you. Thank you for that question, Daniel. Uh, so holistic development has many facets. Yes, you have development, academics, of course, you know, that's a major thing that you're about. Once you're here on the campus, that's academics, yeah? But then there are many other aspects. There's social development. There is development in terms of learning about financial matters, financial education, you know, and there are several other facets. You know, you want to maintain mental health. You want to entail, maintain physical health. Uh, the truth of the matter is, though, that, you know, there is this thing called the wheel of life. And basically, there are things don't won't always be to the same extent. Meaning, you know, you're not going to be spending hours in the gym when you have coursework to do. So you want to have some level of harmony in your life, but some things will take priority over others. So the truth is that you're going to have to recognize that you have priorities, things that you have to put first, but in the midst of it all, don't neglect your personal growth. You know, mm -hmm. so yes, you're going to learn the chemistry and the biology and the maths and all of those other things, but you have to seek to, to read a book about something that you would not have known about before. You know, and uh, 
I, we do have the holistic development program and that you can sign up for via our website, the FST website. And so in the holistic development program, we have the concept of, of putting your goals and your dreams together, you know, going through that type of a thing, learning about finances. We're going to have interviews with different individuals from different walks of life who can help you in that holistic development. Um, there is a book called The University of Success. And, you know, they have different lessons in that book that is there's so much that you can learn and there are short lessons. So it's not going to take away from your main job. Your job is to go to school. You don't want to take away from that main job, but you need to seek to develop in other areas of your life. And so the our holistic development program is actually geared towards helping students in that regard. That's an excellent point that you've made there in terms of how are you seeking to develop yourself. And so I want to ask Saeed, uh, you have represented at the Model United Nations, right? MUN in at Harvard and many times you've been, you know, received, received awards from it, I believe, as well. So how do you, um, as someone who's so involved, you're also doing a demanding degree, how do you balance all of that and still manage your personal development? Uh, so let me paint a context, right? When I became head delegate in my first year, I broke the Caribbean record. The Caribbean record was two, we got five awards. I managed to sustain that in my second year as a head delegate, getting the same five awards. I trained the people from Trinidad and Barbados, the St. Augustine and Cape Town campuses, respectively, along with Mona, brought 20 students, including myself, to Harvard. That took time. Training them took time. I was also a motor. And so during all of that, I was preparing to go to Germany to moot, which is very important. I get a grade for that uh, for my academics. Along with that, uh, I started uh, in January. I was in December, January, there about, right along that exam period. I was also doing debate training because I had a, a debate competition in Thailand to attend. I did all of that. Consider the fact as well that I was... Uh, in my hall, I was at Irving Hall at the time, very much involved when it comes to, you know, chilling and talking with people and all, very much involved. I had mentees very much involved with them as well. Now, how did I do all of that? It takes discipline. It takes discipline uh, because what the, so some of the things that I've done, and I'm trying to be very practical as best as possible, that's why I'm giving you the context. It's very difficult to have discipline where it is that you're in a university space where everything is at your fingertip. And so I believe that discipline is key. Even before time management, you need discipline. Now, a part of me being, being disciplined is, all right, I reward myself. So you, you won't find me going out to drink with friends if I have things to do and I'm not satisfied by it. So I reward myself. Okay, I will go and have a drink with Andrew tomorrow if it is that I get this done today. That's how I view it. Another thing is, before I go to bed every night, I have a diary, and I can show you, I have a diary, 2020, right? I have a diary, and as old person as it sounds, you will see in my notes, I write the date, and I write what I need to do the following day. And so I plan, I get up in the morning with a purpose, because I know what I'm about come tomorrow morning. So if I need to get up 9 o'clock, 8 o'clock, I am up. I don't like waking up early. And so if I can structure my day so I can get up at 12 o'clock and still get everything done, I do that. Same that to say, students, that you can do whatever you want to do. You can party, you can have your girlfriend, your boyfriend, you can go drink with your friends, you can chill, you can be very much involved with your hall, play your sports, and still do very well at extracurricular activities and be very good at it. And you can also do very well with your GP and your academics. It only takes discipline. Once you have discipline, then time management comes into effect. You know that, all right, I'm going to play some FIFA, but I can't play it on past 11 o'clock because I need to go study until 2 o'clock in the morning. Right? And so the discipline leads into better time management. The discipline also leads into boundaries. You have to know when to tell people no. And so there are certain functions and there are certain things where I may be invited to, but for particular reasons, I have to say no. Now, there are some of them that I really want to go to. But then I have to look at the at, at the concept. An example is I'm invited to, to 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 this program, and I'm also invited to another program tomorrow. But I have something that I need to do between today and tomorrow. Now I look at okay, 
what's my impact like okay where am i needed most and i made that decision right and so you have to be comfortable with weighing decisions because at the end of the day you see if you say yes to everybody then you have no grounds you, you just like you're just like a boat in the sea you're just going with the waves and you have to be the master of your time you have to be the one to say okay i have 24 hours in my day i have 16 active hours and i need to use and maximize these so do i get eight hours sleep yeah probably sometimes even 10 11 hours because at the end of the day you have to be disciplined you have to manage your time uh there are habits as well so i find that since covid i've been on my phone a lot just scrolling through twitter and daniel can tell you i always on twitter tweeting talking interacting and i'll sit around my desk and i'll do that and I'll say wow three hours just like that gone just mm -hmm. like that I know after have to rein in myself to say, all right, I'm on my phone for too long. So I put out my phone. The same thing with WhatsApp. You can't answer, and it's a part of setting boundaries as well. If you want to do well, you have to manage your time. So 20 messages come in, you can't answer all 20 of them one time. That's going to take you an hour, mm -hmm. and you have other things to do. So you have to know to strategize. You have to know to prioritize. That's very important. Mm -hmm. And with discipline, you get very good time management. Mm -hmm. And with all of that, you find that you'll be very productive. And you'd be surprised the amount of things that you can get done. And so that is how, with all of, with doing all of that now, you're propelling yourself to a brighter future. You're propelling yourself to be known for what you have done. And you're also propelling yourself to help others while you're helping yourself. And that's a major part of it. No matter what you do, hand down the information. Pass down the knowledge. If you're going to do something and you can involve a first-year student, involve that person. Involve someone that you can teach those. Because at the end of the day, it goes back down to networking again. A lot of things that you don't have to do, you can delegate it to somebody else and ask them to do it for you. So being in leadership positions, it doesn't mean that you have to have the world on your head. Mm. It means that you work together, you collaborate, teamwork. Putting all of those things together, you'll be surprised. You'll be very surprised how all around you can be uh, in being a student and a student leader at that. So Saeed, you made so many important points there. And what I want to highlight is what you were saying at the end about delegation. Because I do think sometimes persons will look on and say, boy, you know, I can't handle this and this and that. I'm interested in stuff, but I can't handle doing all of them at the same time. So I'd say even for my position, it's not that I am doing all of the work of the FST Guild Committee. That's not the reality, no. I have a team and you have to be careful about who you pick for your team because right. you have to be able to depend on your team at some right. point in time for the majority right. of the time. And so if, you're, if you even look at your team as a network as well, you know, if and that's that's you really exponentially multiplying how much can get done. The more you, the bigger your team is, and the 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 more efficient they are in achieving their goals, it's the better able you are to achieve the overall goals of that team. So there are opportunities that you can plug, but you also have to be smart about how you engage in them. Sometimes, as you said, say if I bring a first year in. And I say, for, you know, me and the first year are going to work together and get X, Y, Z done. That splits the work in two. So right. sometimes it's not that we, the individual, have to take the entire world on our heads to get something done. I absolutely love utilizing networks to get way more done. Persons will look on and say, how, is, how did you get so much done? It's because it's not me alone. No man is an island. You have right. to look at how you're building out that network. So many and important points made there, Saeed. Yeah, you find as well, Daniel, that when you set a standard, when you when you manage yourself in a particular way, mm -hmm. then those who work around you more than likely will manage themselves in a particular way as well because they will fall in line, especially if you are the leader. And that is very important to your organization and skill and development for yourself and for those around you. That's a big point that you've made there, um, because I find that the same way that I lead my core team is the same way that they will then lead their subcommittees and their, you know, the sub teams overall. So it's very important that anything you do, you maintain that standard of what exactly it is that you expect as output from the team. It's, just, it's important to establish that because then everybody knows that this is what we do and it becomes a part of the team identity overall. So I do see that our host is back. So I'm going to allow him to speak if he'd like to. Mr. Orain Green, our physics department rep. Hello, hello, hello. I'm back again. Hopefully my internet is stable enough to carry the rest of the show on. Thank you for all that you guys have done. 
I can see that the next question on the roster would be, how can I, as a student, um, create opportunities for myself and my fellow students? All right, maybe Savannah and Andrew can take that one. So I would um, send a to Savannah. Right. Savannah. Yes, so how can you create opportunities for your students? Um, yeah, yeah. Right. there's a bit of a lag, sorry. So yeah, um, how can you create opportunities for yourself and others around yeah. you? There are, you have to know that there are different types of opportunity. Um, first of all, you can't always look for the thing that's gonna benefit you in the immediate future. So might, something might not pay as well as something else or it might not pay at all but opportunities come in several forms. It can be some volunteer work that you do today that builds your resume and helps you later in the future. It can be a little job on campus that gives you a little stipend today and it helps you in the future. So um, I think a very important note to make today is not to focus on the big fish in the pond. You have to focus on the little fish as well that help to build your first. So on campus now, um, different things. I think volunteering is big. There's always an opportunity for that because yes, there are jobs, but everybody's going for the same job. I'll get to that later, but you might not get it. So I think volunteering is good. It's a good way to build a network. It shows people that you are willing to work. It shows people that you have good work ethic as well because you're not only doing it for the pay. You're doing it because you know you have good in yourself and you want to give back to your community. Also, different jobs on campus as well, and even to be able to job on campus you need to take it seriously because if you do you're not it's only affecting you it's affecting other people and it reflects on yourself so right now i'm a tech yes campus, and i don't want to pursue anything in computing per se but at the same time it's a job that i have known it's going to reflect on me people are seeing who i'm working now and i have to conduct myself as such so I think you can look for, as I said, volunteer activities, different jobs on campus. Right now we're online. So what you can do, you can look for remote, you can look for remote job opportunity to build yourself to be able to get those job opportunities. You have to be computer literate. And it's not just being able to turn on your laptop and do a Google and type of a Word document. You need to be able to navigate Excel better than the other person. You need to be able to navigate um, Word better than the other person. These are the softwares online that you, see, you need to be able to use them because when you go in, if they feel that you have some sort of literacy in the software that they present you with, you're going to edge over the other candidates as well. While you may not use the exact same software that they're using, because you got that experience before, it's easier for you to transition. You have some sort of knowledge to apply. You're not learning from scratch. Also, you need to realize that everything you do is building up yourself for an opportunity so try not to just stay there and be okay with the knowledge that you have you have to try to build yourself and networking as i said also communities as well you can approach your lecturers and ask them if they're working on a research project ask them if they'd like help with it granted it is very important to them it's probably going towards a degree that they're pursuing and they might not want you to be as hands-on as you want to be but any little thing can literally help you get this insight into this world that's way above your level right now you're just pursuing your bachelor's but they might be pursuing a phd and you might get that insight into that field you might not even have to want to pursue that before um they could see your interest and say that hey all right. Although I can't make you come on the project now, I know that you have this interest. So when some, when an opportunity comes up, I can link you with it and you can job and different things as well. So just to read, if you talk to your lecturers, you know that some of them actually own, own businesses or they work at other businesses outside of UE. So something simple, simple as that. One of my lecturers said that he actually enjoys when he for a class and he did that very well. Even if you know that not everyone sits at the front and not everyone is loud and talking but he values um he values time very well and he values when people come on time um yeah so because of that he know he usually give not usually but he gave somebody a job opportunity just because of that so what i'm saying is you need to keep your eye open try to know the people around you so that you can know about these opportunities um, even the students are on it. As I said, there are small businesses everywhere. It might you might be able to like join them, or maybe you have one for yourself, and you can connect with them and do a collaboration and expand yourself. It's just I think it ties a lot into networking and expanding your horizon and to 
opportunities that not that may not necessarily be the best on paper right now, but they can also but they can benefit you or build your future opportunities to come. Yeah. All right. So many important points made there, and I want to. Okay. I see Andy Thank you, Savannah. Yeah. Go right ahead. Andrew. Uh, yeah. So as it goes on to opportunities on campus, I I stay for that the university campus is the most diverse market in Jamaica, right? As you would have persons from different demography, different um, country, age group, ethnicity, come together in one place, right? So you should like not all persons are going to be creating a business mind per se. But everybody's going to want to start a business or some type of entrepreneurship all right but for those who do i always encourage us to, look, to find persons as someone said to them before find persons who want to do the same feel as you all right so i'm doing an econ and statistics with an accounting minor majority of the persons who i hang around on a day-to-day -day basis are doing the same thing because you mm -hmm. have that one goal in common so you know so we're not we're not focused on creating a business but we know that we want to do this we want to work here we stay together right um as it goes to creating opportunities per se on campus there are always opportunities on campus like if you walk the campus you see somebody advertising their business on a light post somewhere all the time right i think we as students don't use up the resources of UE to our best right there are persons on UE right now um before before i was treasurer running i asked them what is one thing you'd allow for the guild to do I asked persons who are have them small business and they, 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 UE, the guild itself don't give opportunity to the students who have businesses right so you'd have seen the society could have done the financial essay. Um, expo, as what you call, to mm -hmm. showcase the many mm -hmm. businesses within SciTech. And no person would not know that SciTech has so much businesses, right? The law then took it up last year through the Mike Charles having an expo over law, right? The people showcasing their business. And I think that people should step out of their comfort zone, right? Um, gone are the days that one in, um one stream of income is the way you're gonna live and move forward and flourish in life. Gone are the days. You are now taught that six year income is now what you need to be looking for, right? People need to start thinking outside the box as it goes on opportunities to on campus. Am I, I, is it okay, Daniel? Because I see like, like yeah. <laughs> for me, it's different. It's still the biggest problem we have as a young as a generation we're not financial literate. Mm. I think that's our biggest problem. I don't I, I don't think her, our parents are taught to be financial literate, and it trickles down to us. Where I can give an example where people were outraged when you sent out the recent recent email about about paying um school fees, right? And I'm saying that they were saying that a lot of a persons are coming to university where they can't find. It. And I say that yes, it is a bad situation where first you cannot find the tuition, but you cannot blame you if I tell you people start think ahead and start plan ahead, right? When you when you when you look at Amer um first world countries, they're they're creating college funds from their kids from their kids before the kids conceive. They they started paying ahead college fund them um by a bond, put it on for eighteen years. The kid would have a thirty or thousand to start something. They would give the kid their old car. That's so that those are things planned ahead financially that we as U.S. students need to start looking for. Also like create opportunities because opportunity now create itself. I'm start create. I'm start think. Okay, I'm going to need I'm going to need this. How am I going to get to there? Right? As it go on for evil or relative field of study. Uh we're at university and most of us it comes to balance itself. Most of us don't evil. Most of us go to class and go to a room or you know, we mm -hmm. out on campus when we right now most of the asking us for five years of work experience, three years of work experience, right? We need to start using opportunities and go and get a internship somewhere, right? Working somewhere, even this, they can, like I know some persons cannot afford to 
do a free internship because the right of it is that you don't have the expense here, so, but you need to start looking for these opportunities to get work, to get work done. Um, there's so many online courses, free courses that offers mm -hmm. like project um, management and all that, and project management you know, are a lucrative field, mm -hmm. especially in government project management, because they're looking for courses to manage projects for some reason. So project management is really important for you right now. There's so many ways you can go about enhancing yourself, making yourself more sellable, if I can use that, or marketable. Um, for me, I I do the accounting. I, I do plenty the ACCA, but I'm going to do a CFA, because it's the same thing. I, it's like a master's in accounting at that point. Um, I'm not creative at all, but I'm trying to teach myself Photoshop. I... I'm not a graduate in statistics or I'm a statistics major. I teach myself how to use Stata or um, all different softwares. So when, so when I go here to an employer, they can say, all right then, I have this. I've actually gotten a job interview just because I know how to use um, QuickBooks, which is accounting software. I've gotten to an interview. I didn't get the job because I don't have an accounting degree, which is a situation for them. But just because of having that on my resume, I was able to get an opportunity. And other people start me to like, sell them said it's gonna raise that like I said before degrees alone won't get you a job anymore. Mm -hmm. Like you need to start looking at other ways of putting yourself out there. You most likely have a degree and don't do, do anything in, in the degree you're doing. I have a friend that have a degree in chemical engineering and is actually doing marketing right now. Wow. Right because she she taught herself Photoshop and all the things like there are opportunities out there different from a business or, or making a business. We need to start put ourselves out there. I'm done. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that was I love that. I love um the way that you said it about making opportunities. I think another good part part about making opportunities is taking advantage of opportunities that are already there. You mentioned LinkedIn and doing uh, uh, um other okay. courses. So in addition to courses that you have before. As we refer to um is Orion talking? Because I hear somebody talking while I'm talking. Is everything okay? Yeah? Can I continue? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, okay. I was, um, I was. Yeah. What I was saying now? is... Orion. Yeah, Orion, but you're kind of breaking up. What I was saying is that um, for, for the thing with work experience, what I realized that you can do is, for example, those of us who have served on the guild, you can use that as experience as well for jobs and for opportunities. And something else that I love is that um, you can use personal branding. And something that I've done is right now I'm building a website for my mom, right? So now I'm going to put on my resume that I know how to use WordPress to build a website. I'm going to put that on my resume so that those account as experience any little thing that i can do that comes towards experience on my resume i'm going to do it and we're just kind of like rewording and making your your um experience that you've had before marketable making yourself marketable using things that you've done before and making it marketable so that when employers see you and see your profile they can say wow this person has done a lot um i see i see after wants to come in I think you want to come in. Yeah, I said I'm a resume. I have event planning, event organization, event coordination, project management. Just because of you, I'm just waiting on. I'm hopefully I'm here for to help in the execution of carnival to put carnival carnival coordinate on it. You need to like a lot of us just um do things, especially like on committees, and then we don't know how to market that. Mm -hmm. Your place on your place on your resume. Um, block group for it. No, you don't do that. Means um, team leader for yes, <laughs> you need to know the work. Okay. Team leader mm -hmm. for this one amount of and, and we did this. We we did this for persons who are acting in treasury somewhere. Um, financial analyst, um, financial controller, something of that sense. And you say <laughs> how, how you go about it because they're not marking that. When when. When an employee look at um treasurer for oxide association like or you know, say, okay then what if you put financial analysts for oxide or in that sense and you 
Dr. Gallimore is disagreeing. I'm, I'm not taking our say I'm a financial analyst, but the <laughs> how you put yourself together or how you market what you have done. If get I take that because, point because that point is important. Because, because um, I could we can go ahead, yeah. Because as the treasurer, what treasurer the tre deal treasurer for me was a full time job. I, I, I don't go on, I don't go on kid. It was a full time job. I was on call at, at all times. I have to leave class at some point to go in a meeting or to, to make some type of payment. And it was a full time job. And what the manager told me is that you and yourself would have done more than most accounting degree made um, graduates in accounting. Me and myself, because what I'm doing is a full is like a full time job because creating and constant record keeping up these accounts. And when I when I apply for jobs and I look at what they want me to do in these places. I already do this already. I do all these already. I've I've already created balance um accounting statements from scratch. I've done cash um you know constant record keeping all over all over again. I've done these already and the position I are these are junior accountants. These are you know persons who are supposed to have level two ACCA um mm -hmm. qualifications. I'm doing these things already just about how your market are telling what how you go about doing something already because you already have the experience, mm -hmm. right? And a lot of people don't even know, to be honest, because your UE degree does not tell you that you're competent for the job. It tells your employer that you're able to learn whatever they are doing or they are teachable, right? Whatever you're doing is teachable because majority most, most of the degrees are not exactly, uh, we are not taught exactly what we're going to do because we're not a hands-on university or reading. Mm -hmm. So what our degree to our employers are, we are competent enough to learn what we're doing. But you know, so I take off them laps, they're not gonna, you know, over so sad. So I take your point and I see that Dr. Gallimore wants to come in. So I'm going to allow her to I do, to I certainly do, Andrew. Um one of the things that I just want to caution you about, you know, so you spoke about financial analyst. Now if so if you have that on your resume that you're a financial analyst, the person who is reading your resume is expecting um, something of a certain level and a certain standard. Now, the truth is, you could say financial controller for block B, whatever. That's not a problem. But when you say financial analyst, that is a different level, in my opinion. And so you don't want to also um say more than it actually is as well you know you want to sell yourself but you can also put yourself in a compromising position when you give an impression or when someone else gets the impression that it is it you're you're trying to fluff it more than it actually is so that is a caution that i would have in them in the mix of that there's one other thing yeah, i wanted um, to say it was a bad example <laughs> no problem. problem. Um, no problem. Uh, it was a, I was, it was an example, but it was a bad example because when I said it, I realized that I can advise on you know, CFA to actually, you know, three. But I was just giving an example of how your word, what you're doing to your employer, makes a and big I, Excellent, excellent points that you've made. Absolutely excellent points. You know, I mean, I, I really just also have to to commend you all. I'm here listening to young people. I'm listening to you all. And I am so heartened that the future of this nation is in wonderful, great hands. You know, really want to commend you. I just want to make one little comment. Um, so the, I, there's a colleague in the math department who, um, so we had a holistic development program for postgrad students. And he, he was our guest speaker. And he spoke about the fact that when you start working, once you start working, you should start building a business on the side of your regular job so that by the time you're 40 years of age, and well, for you, it may be younger, you know, by the time you're 40, what you're doing on the side is at least netting you twice what you're doing in your regular job. So you have options. You know, when I was growing up, I never hear none of these things. You know, you just thought, you just taught. Get a job, love the job, stay with the job for 40 years and you'll be okay. You know, but it's a new era and I really want to commend you all for encouraging your fellow students to actually start thinking and expanding their minds. That's a good point there. Back to you, Maya. 
Definitely. All right. So we're we're winding down. We're wrapping up. Thank you for all of our speakers that have stayed with us so far. And also the other ones we don't want to leave. You know, JPS just didn't want them to be great or flow. But they're here. Um, so I'm going to go into a giveaway because you know we've done big up the small businesses on our Instagram. We have the small business highlights on our Instagram. The socials are right there. So you can follow us on our Instagram, click the small business Saturday highlights, and you can see all the small businesses coming out of Cypher. And so we have a giveaway. But before I do the giveaway, I'm going to ask you if you have a question for any of the speakers speaking right now on holistic development, personal branding, how to network, and things like that, drop it down below and then we'll put it up on the screen and we'll answer at least one or two questions from the audience. All right, so our giveaway, we are being sponsored by uh, Doll Accessories JA, and we have two sponsors, you know, and Naturally Glowing Cosmetics. Sorry. Um, yeah, so our first business is owned by Miss Michaela Daly. She's a CEO and founder of Doll Accessories JA. She also has two other businesses. She has Gaz Gazanella Edit and Mickey's Lips. Over on Doll Accessories, she caters for personal needs, packaging items, decor, and so much more. She's also a manager of a store that's owned by her fiance, and that's a newly launched business called What's On Store. So you can follow her at underscore dot doll accessories dot ja. We also have naturally glowed up skincare, and that's owned by Miss Okilia Parchment. She is my VP, so she's my assistant VP SI on the Cytec committee, and she's also the pageant coordinator for Miss Cytec. So she in big things that she have big business. What they are is they are Jamaican skincare line, and they offer natural and organic handcrafted products that help you to achieve healthy and glowing skin. They believe that mm. healthy skin is always in a natural regime and a natural reg regime mm -hmm. <laughs> will help set your skin on the right path. Their products will have your skin feeling and looking nourished. So from Dolled Up Cosmetics, we have the Laborite Bundle because you don't know show up. We know yesterday, so clean sweep um, of all the seats. And so they have a velvet scrunchie and two pairs of snap clips of all my ladies and for the naturally glowed up skincare that is for both ladies and gentlemen so because everybody can take care of their skin and they're giving away a turmeric powerhouse bar so that that is turmeric sunflower oil palm oil goat milk all the good wow. things for your skin whether it's for your face or for your body and you can remove the dead skin unclog your pores reduce hypopigmentation reduce acne scars and if you head over to her page you'll be able to see before and after pictures so how are you going to win this now i want the first two people who can dm us on our faculty instagram page right now dm us and tell us the names and positions of at least six persons on the faculty of science and technology guild committee right now right, 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 right now and you must be following the page in order to win go right 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 right, right now and in, to know if you win we will reply back and say you've won or you have not won and then you'll get further details about how you can receive your package, etc. Because even though it is COVID and even though it is online, we're still going to make sure that you get it in person. All right. Now I'm going to throw it out to see if there are any questions from the audience. Tech support, can you let me know? Put it up on screen. As if we have any questions from the audience so we can answer now and then we can wrap up. All right, I see Janine McCoy, that's my mentee, saying, be a part of the process and not merely the product. Big quote that, my friend. Definitely. Be at the end of life, everybody has something to add. I agree so much, Gabrielle. Network to increase your <laughs> network. network. Definitely. Saeed Bernard mentioned that earlier during his presentation, yeah. so definitely. All right, I don't see any questions. All right, yep. no problem. So then we can just do a final closing message from each, each person. From each Great. Uh, Daniel, would you like to go first? Sure. So firstly, I want to thank everybody for listening to us for the past hour and 25 minutes. I think it's been a very good discussion and starting to stimulate some of those thoughts for first years around how can we approach the upcoming semester that starts 
on Monday, September 7th, that's closer than it looks. It's like the rear view mirror objects are closer than they appear. So I think this was a very good um, foundational piece to set the tone for that mindset of how do you look at the future and how do you look at how you're going to interact with the university space. A lot of nuggets, a lot of gems have been dropped and I'm just hoping everyone is picking them up as we, the Guild Committee, seek to drop a bomb this year. Beautification, opportunities and development, motivation, and of course, belonging. So thank you all for listening and I wish you the very best in the upcoming semester. All right, Dr. Gallimore. Okay, um, so again, yes, I do wish you all the best as we start on this journey. We're all on the journey together. So I'm actually even gonna encourage us to be patient with each other. You know, you may think, well, the lecture's supposed to know what's going on. You know, there's some things we don't really understand and don't really know. And so um, if we work together and we're patient with each other, then we will make it through and make it through in, in fine style. We will have said it was good that you know we we did it this way and so there's just so much to learn so much to learn i want to encourage students to grow yourself be be committed to personal growth be committed to to doing things that you haven't done before be committed to networking be committing be committed to become a better version of yourself as we go through this wonderful and exciting year Great. I love that. I love that so much. Uh, Andrew, go ahead. Uh, good evening again to everybody. So, it's going to be a very interesting year. Um, unprecedented. Fully online for most of us. Most of us will have been, some of us will be online school already, but fully online for most of us. I want to say something different. I want you guys to enjoy the time home enjoy the times with your family enjoy these times to get to yourself mm -hmm. all right we don't after this we're not gonna get these times where we can really sit back and just enjoy time with the family because i've been really grateful for this for the covid actually as, as bad as it's on because it, it really gave me a pause that i needed the pause from school the pause from the world and everything because it was very, very, very stressful semester. And I sat back and I appreciate when everybody was complaining that they wanted to go outside, they, they, I, I sat back and I appreciated the break because um, so I was maybe doing too much. So I want, so I get time to you know, spend time with my family or my sister, which I haven't seen much of them over the last three years because they've on campus. So enjoy the time with you. All right, guys? and enjoy this enjoy the rest of the year enjoy the semester you guys are going to have fun you guys are going to meet new people do not make this pandemic get the best of you All right guys start planning ahead start thinking beyond the pandemic start planning beyond the pandemic All right guys and just stay safe good, good night good evening all right love that and for my final words i know i wasn't here for the entire thing but i did listen to every speaker and the fun thing and the great thing about being online is that you guys if you thought you know there's something here that you want to listen to again you can always come back on our youtube page subscribe and you can always come back and watch it over and say oh this is what that person was saying that was what that person was saying which is what i love about the online place or the online space is that there's always recording so you can always come back and review and see again what it is that you may have missed in the past mm -hmm. uh, i want to say and i want to give a big word of encouragement to every student and say that you are the first of your kind you're one of a kind you're the first students to start an academic year online the first group of students. And that means that you have an opportunity. You get to set the precedent for what networking is in an online environment. You get to set the precedent for what making connections is in an online environment. You get to choose that. You get to be those change makers. And I love that. I know that in the past couple of days, we've all been bombarded with all this negativity and all the this and that and this are happen and that are happen. But the only thing that you can control in this space is yourself, your mindset and what you do and your response to everything. So I really really hope that everybody had a good time i know it was hour and a, almost an hour and a half now um you know i thank you for having long attention spans to be able to withstand this i thank you for all the watchers who are here and um i hope that the next 
thing that we have oh sign up for mentorship program remember that check out the small business highlights on our page follow all of our social media and just i just hope everybody has a great day a great week school starts in three days and i hope that when school starts if you're not prepared that's okay as long as you make sure that you do and make the necessary steps to be prepared. Thank you guys so much. And thank you for being a part of the hashtag Faculty of Greatness.